Hello world, my name is Matt Spa, and I'm a photographer and video producer in Atlanta, Georgia. I've been putting off making this video for quite some time because I need a haircut. I need a haircut really bad, but there's another video that I want to release at the same time as this one because they're kind of related and I'm super excited about the other video. So we're just going to soldier on. Bad hair and all. In this video, I'm going to give you my two cents on the Final Cut Pro Color Grading Masterclass that has been put together by Dylan John Dickerson. If you're a regular viewer here, welcome back. If this is your first time, I try really hard to make videos that are all audio, video, and photo related, but I'm just not super focused. So sometimes I post random work I've done or cat videos or pro rodeo footage or you just never know. But if any of those things appeal to you, I hope that you'll consider subscribing. Color correction and color grading are integral parts of video production. And they can have a huge impact on how your videos are received and the kind of uh, emotional impact that they have. You can get better through trial and error or you can be proactive and you can find some instruction, but for me, that has not always been easy. And until recently, I had never found a course that I felt like was a good match for my goals and my current skill level and my budget. The resource that I found was Dylan John Dickerson. And if you have not seen his YouTube channel, I will link to it below. If you work in Final Cut, it is definitely worth checking out. His videos are almost completely fluff free and the production value is really high. So when I saw that he had produced a course on color grading and that it was in my budget, I signed up. For the record, I'm not affiliated with Dylan in any way and I paid for my course outright. The course consists of 88 video lessons with five additional titles that as of this recording are marked as coming soon. If you buy the course, you get access to any additional videos that are published and a discount code for Color Finale Pro 2, which is a color grading plugin for Final Cut that Dylan uses, but it's not required for the course. You also get downloadable copies of Dylan's custom LUTs, which I've found to be quite good. Um, I've used them exclusively in episode one of my new series that I referenced earlier called Modern Cats Vintage Glass, which are basically just cat videos that I shoot with vintage lenses. I'll link them here and below, but in the first episode, I used Dylan's LUTs to grade the footage. Also downloadable are video clips for you to use with each of the tutorial lessons. And having the same clips allows you to gauge your accuracy by comparing your result with what's on the screen. In some cases, I felt like I was doing exactly what Dylan was doing, but my result was different. And having the same footage meant that I could figure out where I was going wrong. And I don't know about you, but for me, sometimes doing something wrong and then going through the process of figuring out why it's wrong makes the right way stick in my brain better. So big props to Dylan for supplying the footage. There are a few videos that use stock clips that unless you subscribe to the service that he uses, you cannot get, which is a bummer, but fortunately there's only a few of them. The first four sections of the course are all foundational. The opening section covers basic definitions, color science, color space, color profiles. He gives a brief overview of eight and 10 bit color and he makes some monitor suggestions. It's comprehensive without like just totally geeking out on specs and glossing you over. Next is an overview of all the video scopes that are in Final Cut. That's followed by descriptions of all the different color adjustment tools that are available in Final Cut. And this is the section where we get our first look at Color Finale Pro 2, which I'm gonna save all of my comments about until the end of this video. If you're just absolutely dying to know my thoughts right this very minute, I will timestamp this video so you can skip to them right now. The last of the foundational sections covers color theory. And everything here is presented in a clear, understandable way that's, um, it's theoretical, but it's also practical in how it applies to video work. And I, I appreciate that. It's like, this is how this fits. The opening sections do a really good job of differentiating between the color concepts that are measurable, solid, like objective things, versus those that are more subjective in the color process. And I feel like that's an important distinction to keep in mind. Color accuracy is objective, but the process of creating a look is subjective and uh, understanding how those two work together 
I think is a really important key to having this fully orbed understanding of color in video. The next 37 lessons make up the color correction section. This to me is that mechanical, technical, like objective side of the work. You'll get a lot of experience reading the different scopes and a baseline understanding of kind of general best practices, where flesh tones should fall and how saturated they should be, you know, in general terms. The section covers fixing problems, uh, getting things to a consistent and accurate look, and it's where the workflow starts to become apparent, the process that's gonna be repeated over and over. After an intro to color correction, Dylan covers transforming log footage, exposure adjustment, contrast and saturation, uh, color balancing, secondary correction, and shot matching. It covers a lot, but it primarily shows you how to find these measurable markers in your footage that can guide you to that consistent baseline on which you can make more creative adjustments when you're doing your grade. What I learned in this section allowed me to take some footage that I shot at the end of last year that I knew was gonna present some fairly major challenges in terms of color and turn it into really nice, usable footage that I'm proud of. This section also digs a little bit deeper into Final Cut's other features. So it shows you how to set up comparison views for your footage and how to navigate within the software for better efficiency. Um, efficient editing is really what I think of when I think of Dylan Dickerson and seeing how he uses Final Cut Pro is kind of a secondary benefit of the course. The final section of the course covers color grading with four intro videos and then 22 step-by-step -step color grade workflows. Dylan covers travel film looks, uh, teal and orange looks. Uh, he does a music video. There's a gritty war look in there, creating day for night, which I thought was super cool. Uh, horror, beauty, documentary, and even some film specific looks like Mad Max Fury Road and Blade Runner 2049. It's fun stuff. And I was struck by the fact that no matter what your final goal is, that consistent workflow that I talked about earlier is there. And working your way through the lessons, you almost get this like muscle memory in your hands and your brain that makes the content stick. And it demystifies the process by breaking it down into the individual steps. One of my final observations on this section is that the course is by Dylan Dickerson. And so you're seeing him create the looks that appeal to his eye, which in my case didn't always resonate. And that's, you know, that's what makes the world go round. To his credit, he repeatedly reminds the viewer that what he's doing is to his taste and that you need to use the tools to find what works for your tastes and for what is appropriate to, you know, whatever project you're working on. To me, it's just, it's really nice to learn along with someone that kind of has that perspective. Each lesson is divided into a final cut section and a color finale section. And at first, to me, including that additional instruction was kind of a curious choice. Uh, many of the tools that are in color finale are very similar to what final cut has to offer. And annoyingly to me, the user interfaces are backwards to the UI in Final Cut. The controls for like saturation and color wheels are on the opposite side. And the way uh, effects are stacked in order is inverted. And it just, it seems unnecessarily complicated to me. The ability to work in the ACES color space seems to be one of Dylan's big reasons for using the plugin, but it kind of comes with its own set of workarounds with regard to monitoring. Overall, the additional workflow steps did not seem worth the functionality gains. However, the masking capabilities of Color Finale are vastly superior to those of Final Cut. And features like the log wheels and six vector adjustments give a much more elegant and intuitive level of control. Color Finale provides it's like a more surgical set of tools and it treats your footage more gently, if that makes sense. Uh, for footage that's going to get a lot of work done to it, I think it has major advantages. I watched all the final cut sections and all of the color finale sections. And ultimately, I'm really glad that he included this content. My guess is that some users are gonna find this to be super helpful and some will likely never delve into what color finale has to offer.
to wrap up all this, um, I highly recommend the course to anyone who's considering it. It's given me a better trained eye to see what's going on. I definitely have more confidence in dealing with problem footage because of the process, the formula. I know how to find the right tools to do what I wanna do. And I have this new set of creative skills to shape the way my footage looks. And that's awesome. So to Dylan, I say, well done, sir. And to everyone else, I hope that this was helpful. And I thank you so much for watching. Thank you.